Hello everyone. Transgenic plants are genetically modified plants where a foreign gene or transgene is introduced into host plant DNA by genetic engineering. It involves using a suitable vector to transfer the gene of interest followed by selection of putative transformants using selectable and screenable markers. Finally, a transgenic plant is obtained but a number of techniques need to be used to confirm that the plant obtained is indeed a stable transgenic. These include techniques like polymerase chain reaction to amplify the transgene, southern hybridization to study the integration and copy number of the transgene, qPCR to study its zygosity, northern hybridization or rtPCR to study its transcription and western blotting to study whether the transgene is expressing the protein that it codes for. We shall study these techniques in this module. The learning objectives for this module are PCR technique to confirm presence of the transgene, southern hybridization to study integration and copy number of the transgene, northern hybridization and QRT-PCR to study expression of the transgene, western blotting to study expression of the transgene at the protein level. Transformation of plant cells or tissues is carried out using different methods. The most popular methods being agrobacterium mediated or by biolistic transfer. Putative transgenic plants are identified using appropriate selection media and plants are regenerated and transformation confirmed by screening the transformants for expression of screenable markers. However, additional methods are required to study the presence and copy number of the transgene in the transformed plant and to study its transcriptional and translational expression. The polymerase chain reaction is used to study the presence of transgene in the transformed plants. This is required because so far the presence of transgene had only been deduced using selection and screenable markers. Primers specific to the transgene are used to amplify the transgene integrated into the plant genomic DNA. The amplified product is visualized after electrophoresis on agarose gel. Wild type plant and plasmid without the transgene are used as negative controls. Putative transgenic plants showing the presence of an amplified band indicate the presence of the transgene which is the gene of interest. The polymerase chain reaction is also used to understand the inheritance of the transgene. In plants, the transgene insertion leads to a heterozygous condition since only one chromosome will have the transgene while the other of the pair will be the wild type chromosome. On selfing the T0 transgenic plants, the transgene will show a 3 is to 1 ratio if the inheritance is monogenic. The T1 seeds are sown to get T1 plants. If the transgenic plant is heterozygous, it will continue to segregate in subsequent generation. But if it is homozygous, no segregation of transgenic and wild types occur. PCR from a sample of homozygous plants would show presence of the band, while a sample of heterozygous plants, while a sample of heterozygous plants will show some plants with amplified band and others with no band. The ratio would be 3 is to 1 provided the samples studied have a size of about 20 or more. Hence, PCR enable us to identify the homozygous transgenic plants which will be pure lines. While PCR tells us of the presence of the transgene in the transgenic plant, it does not tell us about the copy number of the transgene. It is important to know this since insertion of multiple copies of the transgene may lead to gene silencing and are undesirable. The southern hybridization technique is used for both detecting the presence of transgene as well as its copy number in the plant genome. The technique involves restricting the DNA extracted from transgenic and wild type plants and restricting it with a restriction endonuclease that has one site within the transgene. It is important that the transgene has one restriction site for the enzyme being used because it enables because it enables scoring of each individual insertion. The restricted DNA is transferred to a positively charged nylon membrane by capillary transfer also called southern blotting. The blotted DNA on the membrane 
is then probed using a radioactively 32 p or fluorescent dye label probe that is homologous to the transgene. After hybridization, the DNA can be visualized by placing the membrane in contact with an X ray film. The number of bands observed correspond to the number of copies of transgene inserted into the plant genome. The wild type plant DNA should not show any hybridized bands. Due to the random nature of transgene integration with regard to copy number, transgene orientation and transgene rearrangements, identification of the insertion site is important from the point of view of transgene stability and also for understanding whether the transgene may have unintended effects on plant metabolism. The tail PCR procedure aims at amplification of the genomic sequences flanking the transgene in order to identify the site of insertion. Tail PCR uses transgene specific nested forward primers together with an arbitrary degenerate primer having a lower melting temperature. Priming by the arbitrary degenerate primer that is AD and the gene specific primer ST1 creates both specific that is from the transgenic region and unspecific from the regions flanking the transgene insertion site or random amplification products with AD products. In the next PCR reaction, diluted products from the first reaction are used as templates and PCR amplification is carried out again using the transgene specific primer SP2 and the same AD primer. Only specific products are detectable on the gel. Sequencing of the amplified products gives information on the site of integration of the transgene. Another technique used for identifying the site of integration of the transgene is the plasmid rescue technique. In this technique, bacterial plasmids are recovered from fragments of transgenic eukaryotic genomic DNA. The plant genome with integrated tDNA having a bacterial selectable marker gene and bacterial origin of replication besides the gene of interest is cut with a restriction enzyme having one site in the gene of interest. The RE fragments are self ligated using ligase and plated on a selection medium having the antibiotic specific to the bacterial selectable marker. Only those plasmids having the bacterial origin of replication and the bacterial selectable marker will form colonies. These plasmids are sequenced to identify the plant genomic region flanking the tDNA insertion. The northern hybridization technique is used to study the transcriptional expression of the transgene. It shows the relative amount of transcription of gene of interest as compared to a constitutively expressed gene in the tissue. Total RNA is extracted from the transgenic and wild type plants using trisol method and treated with DNAs to eliminate any DNA contamination. The quality of RNA is checked by electrophoresing the RNA on formaldehyde formamide denaturing agarose gel and observing that the RNA the quality of RNA is checked by electrophoresing the RNA on formaldehyde formamide denaturing agarose gel and observing that the R RNA bands are clearly separated. Denaturing conditions are important to present secondary structure formation in RNA. The RNA from the gel is transferred to a nylon membrane and probed using a labeled cDNA probe that is complementary to the transcript of the gene of interest. Another probe complementary to a constitutively expressed gene like for example the actin, tubulin, EF alpha genes is also used for hybridization as a loading control. RNA loading controls are necessary to ensure an equal amount of RNA is loaded in each well. The relative intensities of these two labeled bands give an estimate of the level of transcriptional expression of the gene of interest. The relative transcript levels of the transgene is determined after normalizing to the actin control. Reverse transcription PCR RT is the most common variant of PCR normally used to detect RNA expression levels. In RT-PCR, 
the RNA template is first converted into a complementary DNA that is cDNA using a reverse tra transcriptase. cDNA is prepared from RNA using random primers or oligo DT primers and reverse transcriptase enzyme. The cDNA is then used as a template for exponential amplification using PCR. PCR is performed on cDNA samples using transgene specific primers. Amplification of the selectable marker gene can also be carried out as a proxy to gene of interest. Amplified products can be visualized on agarose gel. Amplification of a constitutively expressed gene is also carried out for normalization of, of expression levels. However, this method is not accurate enough to quantify the levels of transcription of the transgene. Hence, quantitative RT-PCR is used. Real-time or quantitative PCR that is qPCR is a technique that allows a PCR reaction to be visualized in real time that is as the reaction progresses. Cyber green is the most common fluorescent dye used in this technique. This dye binds to double-stranded DNA and the resulting DNA dye complex absorbs blue light with the lambda max of 497 nanometer and emits green light with the lambda max of 520 nanometer. As PCR progresses, the fluorescence increases due to binding of cyber green to the accumulating PCR products. When the fluorescence signal is above a threshold value, it is called the cycle threshold value or CT value and denotes the cycle number at which the signal intersects the threshold value. For calculating the level of transgene expression, the CT values are normalized against CT values of any one of the housekeeping genes like actin, tubulin, GAPDH or 18S rRNA. This is done to ensure that the comparison of gene expression in transgenic and wild type plants are for a similar amount of total RNA used. This method that is also called the delta delta CT method estimates the relative transcript abundance of the gene of interest in transgenic plant as compared to the wild type plant. qPCR can also be used to determine the copy number of a transgene if DNA is used instead of cDNA. To determine the copy number in T0 plants CT value of gene of interest is compared to the value of wild type single copy endogenous gene as a reference. Example, sucrose phosphate synthase gene in rice. The fold value given by the delta delta CT method directly reflects the number of copies. To determine the homozygosity in T1 plant, the CT values of the gene of interest in T1 and T0 plants are compared respectively to the CT values of a constitutively expressed gene like actin. A plant showing exactly double the copy number as compared to parent T0 plants is considered to be homozygous. The expression of proteins coded for by the transgene depends on various internal factors like mRNA structure, codon usage by host plants, protein structure and folding as well as on the external factors like the host plant features tissues where the gene is expressed, temporal and spatial regulation of protein expression. Hence, it is important to ensure that the transgene product is present in the transgenic plants. For this purpose, two techniques are used, namely the enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay or ELISA and western blotting technique. Both are immunological techniques which use protein-specific antibodies for detection of the transient product. In direct ELISA, a protein specific antibody binds to the protein of interest and is detected directly by an enzymatic reaction involving either alkaline phosphatase or horseradish peroxidase that is conjugated to it. The reaction generates a colored product that can be detected spectrophotometrically. In sandwich ELISA, the protein of interest binds to the primary antibody coated in the ELISA plate and binds to the protein of interest. Then a second antibody that is conjugated to an enzyme binds to the protein of interest 
and is detected as before. Western blotting is carried out by first electrophoresing the proteins and then transferring the proteins from the gel to a nylon membrane. The membrane is then processed for detection of a specific protein immunologically using a protein specific primer, using a protein specific primary antibody and a secondary antibody that binds to the conserved region of the primary antibody and is conjugated with an enzyme. The color reaction specific for the enzyme detects the protein band on the membrane. Compared with the ELISA, the gel electrophoresis step in western blot technique resolves the issue of the cross reactivity of antibodies which improves the specificity of protein analysis. The module can be summarized as a number of techniques need to be used to confirm that the plant obtained after transformation is indeed a stable transgenic plant. There is a need to know the number of copies of transgene inserted, where the transgene is inserted and whether it is expressed. PCR offers a versatile tool for confirming presence of the transgene in the transgenic organism or even subsequent generations of plants. The technique can also be used to determine copy number and zygosity of the transgene. Copy number can also be studied using southern hybridization. The site of insertion of the transgene is studied by using tail PCR, where the flanking regions of the transgene are sequenced. Further, to study the expression of the transgene at transcription level, RT-PCR is a useful technique, which can be used to quantitate the extent of transgene expression. Northern hybridization is an alternative technique used to study transgene expression. Finally, the presence of transgene product, namely the protein of interest, is identified by using immunological techniques like ELISA or western blotting. Hence, there are a number of steps to be undertaken after transformation in order to understand the nature of the transgenic plant obtained. Thank you.